On the outside, the E36 M3 is unassuming with its boxy body panels and understated styling. BMW has even described this second generation of the M3 as subdued elegance, a balance of racing technology and everyday usability. It's no doubt that the E36 is more refined than its E30 predecessor, but that doesn't mean that this M3 is boring. In fact, it's quite the contrary. The introduction of the E36 brought with it the beloved inline six engine to the M3 lineup and handling that proved that this car was just as capable on the track as it was making a trip around town. Despite the focus on delivering a comfortable performance car, BMW actually had low expectations for the US market following disappointing sales of the E30 M3 and E34 M5. And if it weren't for the heroic campaigning efforts of BMW Car Club of America, it might not have made it here at all. Fortunately, the E36 went on to do exceptionally well in the US, selling nearly 33,000 cars for the 1995 through 99 model years. To put that in perspective, a total of 71,000 E36 M3s were built during its production run, meaning almost half were sold to Americans. MSRP started at nearly $40,000, with prices quickly rising as options like the heated and powered seats, cruise control, and Harman Kardon sound system were added. But that was over two decades ago. The purpose of today's video is to look at what these M3s are selling for in this day and age based on the research and data that I've collected for the E36 market. Don't forget to drop a like if you find this video helpful. Let's get into it. Just like with the E46 M3 market video, I analyzed 150 of the most recent E36 M3 sales on Bring a Trailer, with the first sale in my data set dating back to October 2017, which gives us a little over two and a half years of history to work with. The cars in this data set range anywhere from perfectly preserved stock examples to heavily modded track builds. To illustrate just how versatile the E36 is, this M3 was offered in a two-door, four-door, or convertible body style, and for the American market, was available with a five-speed manual or automatic transmission. For our data, 91 of those sales were coupes, 42 were sedans, and the remaining 17 were convertibles. There were only 10 automatics sold in this set, so the vast majority were fitted with the five-speed manual. But a handful of these M3s were modified to use a gearbox that wasn't native to the E36. The cheapest M3 was a 200,000 mile 1997 Cosmos Black five-speed sedan with a magma interior and sold for just $6,700 in October 2017. No surprise on the opposite end of the spectrum was the track-inspired, lightweight version that sold for 75 grand with 69,000 miles in January 2020. An interesting little caveat here is that Paul Walker was actually a huge fan of the E36 as he had five of these lightweight M3s in his collection that sold for a ton of money at the 2020 Barrett-Jackson Scottsdale auction around the same time as our Bring a Trailer lightweight E36 M3. His most expensive M3 sold for $385,000 with the other four ranging between $220,000 and $260,000 depending on the mileage. That's pretty crazy, but there were only around 125 of these special edition M3s built for the American market. So when we ignore the rare lightweight versions at the top end of the sales prices, the most expensive M3 in our data set becomes a 1994 Mugello Red manual coupe with black interior and only 2,400 miles driven that sold for 58 grand in April of 2019. This particular car was actually number 15 of 45 Canadian spec M3s built for the 94 model year. It's not until you come down to around $36,000 that you find the most expensive American spec M3. Similar to the E46 market, it's pretty easy to tell that the M3s we just finished discussing are outliers as the majority of the cars sold on this site are falling somewhere between ten dollars and $20,000. The average M3 in my data set sold for $16,896.71 with almost 100,000 miles on the clock and the median car rang in at 15 grand. Those numbers give you some high level insight into how the market is currently doing, but let's now take a closer look at how the specs are affecting these sales. Starting with the body style, coupes sold for about 42% more than sedans and nearly 50% more than convertibles. The sedans and convertibles have very close average sale prices, but the sedans have almost 48% more miles than their convertible counterparts. When taking the lightweights out of the equation, the average sale price for the coupes fall a little over $1,000 to right around the $18,000 mark, but it's evident that the two-door variant is still the most desirable. The M3 is fitted with the five-speed manual transmission sold for a staggering 52% more than the automatic, while having 13% more miles on average. It's important to note here that the first generation of BMW's sequential manual gearbox was not offered in the US, so this is just a standard 5-speed automatic transmission with nothing special going on. Moving on to the visuals, the most common exterior color sold in our data set was Alpine White at 31 units for an average price just over $20,000. Cosmos Black was a close second at 23 units for an average price a little under $14,500. The most expensive color was Daytona Violet, which only saw two cars sold for an average price of $27,000, with Mugello 
Yellow Red taking the second spot at a count of 5 M3 sold and an average price of almost $26,000. With that said, it's worth mentioning how some of the other colors fared in the lineup. There were 7 M3 sold in Dacker Yellow for an average price of $20,260, which puts it as the fifth most expensive. Hellrot was ranked 8th at almost $16,855, and Estoril Blue rang in at 10th for $15,000. $1,735.40. Jumping inside the car, the black and dove gray interiors dominated the sales with 68 and 46 units sold respectively. The anthracite cloth with hurricane inserts took the top spot with an average price of $53,000, although this is to be expected since this is the interior found in the lightweight E36 M3s. The anthracite cloth with M rain inserts was the second most expensive interior at almost 25 grand and can be found in the European spec cars. As an E46 owner, it's surprising to see dove gray ranking so highly on the list but I'll admit that this color looks really good in the E36, especially with those two-tone door panels. One last thing to note about the interior is that the cars fitted with the Vader seats sold for an 18% premium over the cars without them, and for good reason too. Those seats are pretty sick. The luxury package was offered as an option on the coupe and sedan variants for the 95 through 97 model years. On the outside, the luxury package was subtly different from the standard M3 with minor changes to the front bumper and side skirts, but inside the car is where the Lux package distinguished itself with wood trimming and leather door inserts, as as well as different front seats that are said to be more comfortable. For our data set, 17 M3s were fitted with the luxury package and sold for nearly $5,000 less on average than the standard M3. Next, we're talking mileage. As was the case with the E46 market, the best fit trend line exhibits a negative power relationship, which means that cars with lower miles are going to be considerably more expensive than cars at the upper end of the mileage spectrum. Following the trend line, cars with 50,000 miles average around the $19,000 mark, and M3s with 100,000 miles average around the $15,000 mark. The highest mileage M3 sold in our data set is a supercharged coupe that was repainted in a color the owner called Fire Orange and sold for $14.5 in October 2018. Last is the model year and condition of the car. The E36 M3 wasn't introduced to the US market until the 1995 model year, which means the 94 models are European spec only. For the 1996 American model years, the 3 liter S50 engine was ditched for the 3.2 liter S52 engine that produced the same 240 horsepower but squeezed out 11 more pound feet of torque over its predecessor and added OBD2 functionality. Although the data were talking about is exclusive to the current US market, it's pretty crazy to compare these output numbers to the European version of the S52 that produced 321 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. They definitely got the better deal here. Moving on to 1997, all M3s were facelifted with different side markers, new nose panel and kidney grills, and the four-door sedan variant was introduced. The following year no longer offered the luxury package, which was also the last model year for the sedan. The last notable model year change is that rear headrest and three-spoke steering wheel were added for the late 98 and 99 M3s. For our data set, the Euro spec 1994 model year M3s topped the average sale price list at $26,734. From there, you'd think that the later model years would follow closely behind, but it was actually the 95 and 96 model years that occupied the second and third most expensive positions, even when filtering out the lightweight M3s that fall into the 1995 bracket. Classic car insurer Haggerty, on the other hand, reflects the sentiment that the newer E36 M3s should be valued higher than the earlier models, although the differences between model years are very slight. For condition, I'm also going to leverage Haggerty's valuation tool since they have the expertise when insuring these cars. Haggerty has this information displayed on their website, which I'll link in the description below, and they categorize cars into four overarching conditions. The top of the line, about as close to perfect as you can get cars, are classified as concourse, and for the E36 M3, estimated values range between $46,600 and $49,000. The second category covers the cars that could win a show despite having a few extremely minor imperfections and fall in the low to mid $30,000 range depending on the model year. Haggerty classifies the next group of vehicles as as good and encompasses the cars that may have had paintwork done but are still mechanically sound. This category accounts for the average M3 and since we've already talked about the values for these cars, let's move on to the last category. The M3s in fair condition are the daily drivers with evident visual flaws and probably need some restoration work with values falling below $10,000. As we saw with our bring a trailer data, these cars are over two decades old and have seen a lot of miles on the road. This means it's becoming increasingly harder to find a car with less than 100,000 miles and in the event that you do find with low miles, you're going to pay a premium for it. If you're in the market for an E36 M3, it's critical that you spend some time understanding the maintenance history of the car you're looking at and get a thorough pre-buy inspection from a reputable mechanic. A general rule of thumb is that the less you spend on the upfront purchase price, the more you'll have to shell out in repairs or preventive maintenance. Some important weak points to note include the rubber in the rear shock mounts that are prone to failure, and when it comes time to replace them with a more robust solution, it's strongly recommended that you reinforce the rear shock tower. You also need to keep an eye on the rear trailing arm bushings and be prepared for an entire cooling system overhaul if it hasn't been done already. One last thing to note is that the R-Tab pocket has been known to 
develop cracks and in some cases fail completely. Although the failure rate is low, this is extremely high risk. So it's highly recommended that the R-Tab pocket be professionally reinforced. Obviously this isn't a comprehensive maintenance list, but the point is these cars will require time and money to keep them running in top shape. You can pay a shop to do the work for you, or if you have the space and tools, you can learn to work on these cars yourself. There's a wealth of knowledge out there in the community and to the E36 owners watching, feel free to drop a comment down below if you feel that there's something that people absolutely need to be aware of when looking at this generation of the M3. The cars listed on Bring a Trailer represent some of the best examples in the E36 M3 market, and there's good reason for this. For starters, Bring a Trailer is extremely selective with the cars that actually make it to auction which automatically weeds out all of the cars in really rough shape. Secondly, the prospective buyer pool is much larger in the nationwide auction, meaning sellers aren't limited to their immediate community for a sale. Because of these two factors, I'm sure you can find cheaper examples in your local classifieds. But I think the data set we've talked about today gives you a good benchmark to work from. If I were in the market for an E36 M3, I'd probably go for a late model, Hellrot, Dacre Yellow, or Estoril Blue, manual coupe with black interior, and those Vader seats, although I do think the Dove Gray looks pretty good as well. There's no telling where values will go for these cars when considering the appreciation the E30 and E46 M3s have both seen recently. But there's no denying that this generation currently offers the most attractive admission fee into the M3 lineup. I'll be doing more videos like this one, so make sure you're subscribed and drop a comment down below if there's a particular car you want to see me analyze. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.